Good morning, everyone. Pastor Zach here with you. Such a beautiful day. Excited to be with you today. Uh, as we start this morning, first just want to say happy birthday to Aaron Carpenter, who has a birthday today. So Aaron, I hope you have a great birthday. Uh, I hope you guys had a great Easter. It was awesome here at church. Uh, it was cool to see so many people uh, and just worship our Lord together. Uh, as we jump in today, why don't we pray and then we'll talk about our lesson for the day. Lord, we come to you now. We thank you uh, for what we, we celebrated last week. And that was that you died for us. And when you rose, you gave us a new life. And I pray that we would take that life and, and we, would, we would live for you each and every day. Lord, help us today as we, as we study your word to focus on you. Lord, to understand what is important and what you are trying to do in our lives. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, so we're actually starting a new unit today, and our unit is, is changing. It's basically about spreading the gospel and how we do that. And today our Bible lessons from the book of Acts, chapter 12. We'll get there in just a couple of minutes. Um, have you guys ever... Um, seeing like a superhero movie or a movie uh, where someone escapes prison and you always think like, man, that's crazy. How could that happen? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today in our, in our Bible story is Peter escaping from prison. We're going to read Acts chapter 12 verses 6 through 19 in just a minute. Uh, before we do that though, as this is a new unit, we have a new big picture question. And the big picture question for this unit is this. What is our mission as Christians? Our mission is to make disciples of all nations by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our mission is to make disciples of all nations by the power of the Holy Spirit. So as we learn about Peter today, I want you to think about how it could have only been an angel, it could have only been Jesus that helped Peter get out of prison. And then we'll talk about it and we'll watch our video. But why don't you, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 12, starting in verse 6. So we're going to read verses 6, 6, excuse me. We're going to read verse 6 through 19. The night before Peter was placed on trial, he was asleep. Fastened with two chains between two soldiers, others stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side and said, Quick, get up! And the chains fell off his wrists. Then the angel told him, Get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put, your coat, put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left him. Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. He knocked at the door in the gate, and the servant girl named Rhoda came and opened it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was overwhelmed with joy. Instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. When they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said. And, when, and then he went to another place. At dawn, there was a great commotion among the soldiers about what had happened. Herod Agrippa ordered a thorough search for them, or for him, for Peter. When he couldn't be found, Herod interrogated the guards and sentenced them to death. Afterward, Herod left Judah to stay in Caesarea 
for a while. What a crazy story, just thinking about it. And I love the description that Luke writes here in Acts when he says that there were, he was chained between two soldiers. So it wasn't like he was just in prison, chilling by himself. He had a chain on his left arm, which was connected to a soldier. He had a chain on his right arm, which was also connected to a soldier. So he had two people that were basically in prison with him. And then there were guards on the outside of the cell as well. And that's what makes this story incredible, is that they didn't wake up to see what happened. They didn't find it out until the next morning. So with that in mind, why don't we watch this week's Bible story video to see exactly what happened. King Herod Agrippa was persecuting believers in the church. He killed James, one of Jesus' disciples. When the king saw how happy this made the Jews, he arrested Peter too. The king put Peter in prison and assigned groups of soldiers to keep guard. While Peter was in prison, other believers in the church prayed and asked God to help him. The king planned for Peter to be killed. The night before his execution, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. He was tied up with chains, and other soldiers stood guard at the gate of the prison. All of a sudden, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a bright light shone in Peter's prison cell. The angel struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, the angel said. The chains fell off of Peter's wrists. The angel told Peter to get dressed, so Peter put on his sandals and his cloak. Then he followed the angel. Peter wasn't sure what was happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. The angel led Peter out of the prison, past the guards, through the gate, and onto the streets. Then the angel left. When Peter looked around, he realized the Lord had rescued him from prison <laughs> and from certain death. Peter hurried to the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark. Believers had gathered there to pray. When Peter knocked at the door, a servant named Rhoda answered. She heard Peter's voice and she was so happy. She rushed back inside. Peter is here. He is at the door, she announced. But the others didn't believe her. You're crazy, they said. But Peter kept knocking and when they opened the door, they could hardly believe it. Peter motioned to them to be quiet and he told them how the Lord had rescued him from prison. Tell James and the other brothers about this, Peter said. Then he left. When the sun came up, the soldiers at the prison couldn't figure out what happened to Peter. And the king punished the soldiers because Peter had escaped. God answered the people's prayers for Peter. God had a plan for Peter and the church, and he rescued Peter from his enemies. Peter knew he would face death because he believed in Jesus, but he kept going so he could share the good news of the gospel. God answered the people's prayer for Peter. He had a plan for Peter in the church. He rescued Peter from his enemies. Peter knew he would face death because he believed in Jesus, but he kept going so that he could share the good news of the gospel. Many believers were killed because of their faith. But Peter didn't hide or give up. He kept going so that he could share the good news about Jesus. What an encouragement for us. Peter knew what he was facing. If you read, if you read the story in Acts, it actually says, and they said in the video, the next day Peter was going to be put to death. So he knew what was coming. He knew what to expect. Yet Jesus saved him. And here's what I love about Peter is that he didn't, he didn't hide that he was a Christian. He didn't try to run away and, and deny it. He said, yes. And he wanted to still, even though he was going to be faced with being hurt, being in prison, possibly being put to death, he wanted to be able to share the gospel with people. And I pray that that's my heart, is that I will share the gospel with people no matter the circumstances. No matter what is happening, I will share the gospel with everyone that I come in contact with, like Peter did. Um, this week, Pastor Brian has a great question for us. So why don't we watch our questions from kids video? Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Roman from Millersville, Pennsylvania asks, 
How does God answer our prayers? Does he always answer us? Roman, God always hears our prayers. That's the first thing we have to understand, that when we pray to God, when we talk with God, he always hears us. He never has his ears closed. He's never asleep. Uh, he's never not paying attention. He hears you. He listens to you always. Now, how does he answer our prayers? Well, the, the technical answer is yes, he always answers our prayers. But sometimes people ask that question and what they mean is this, does God always answer our prayers the way we want him to? And the answer for that is no, he does not. God answers our prayers the best way for us and the way that brings him glory. So if we ever make the mistake of praying something that would not be best for us or something that would not glorify him, even if we don't understand that, God will not answer that with a yes. That will be a no, because he wants to give, again, what's best for us and what brings him the most glory. There are times as well there that God may answer with a yes, but it may not be right away. So we may be praying for something and it's good and it would bring God glory, but it's not the right timing. So it might feel like God has not heard us or answered us, but he has. Again, he always hears us and the answer is yes, but it's not yet. So that's the big idea. When we pray, we, we have to keep in mind, God is listening, he will always answer. But here's the other thing, I, I just really wanna get on your radar real quick while we have the chance. When we pray, we also need to be changing ourselves. We're drawing closer to God. So don't treat prayer just as a way for God to act. Prayer should draw us closer to his heart. And many times when we pray, we should be changed because we're understanding who God is and we want to love him and live for him better. So prayer actually is designed to change us more than anything else. So here's a question back for you. How might not getting something you really want actually be better for you? Have you ever not gotten, gotten something that you really wanted and realized it was for the better? That's because that's what God is doing. I love how Pastor Brian explained that when we pray for something that's not in our best interest, God's not going to answer it the way we want him to. He answers all of our prayers. Sometimes he doesn't give us the answer that we want. And when he doesn't give us the answer we want, it's because it's for our good. You know, I could be thinking, man, it would be awesome for me to have a Lamborghini. And I would be praying, Lord, give me a Lamborghini. And he, he's going to say no, because that's not in my best interest. So I want you guys to think about a time when maybe you really, really, really wanted something. And you prayed for it, and God said no. And you realize that that was a much better decision than what you wanted because what you wanted wasn't going to help you in the end. And so think about those times. Every decision that we make should be aimed to please the Lord. And when we ask God for something, we should be doing it to glorify him, not to bring about us. Um, and so when we do that, remember, God answers our prayers. He just may not answer it the way that we want him to answer it. So, you guys remember the last unit we talked about missionaries in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, this time in this unit, we're going to go just a little further north. We're going to jump into Canada, and we're going to learn what God is doing in the city of Toronto, Canada, which is just on the other side of Buffalo, New York, uh, where the Niagara Falls is at. So it's right there, and it's, I've never been to Toronto, but I've heard it's a beautiful city. And we're going to see in our Missions Moment video what God is doing in the city of Toronto. So why don't we take a couple minutes and watch this week's Missions Moment video. Ah, the culture of Europe. The creatures of Africa. <laughs> The, um, cuisine of Asia. Yes, the world is a big, beautiful, crazy collection of tribes and tongues and tastes and, well, whatever that is. If you wanted to see it all, you could hop on a really slow ship and circle the globe. Or you could just come here, Toronto, Canada. Most of the people we have here in Toronto, they are not from here. So, in Toronto, you can find uh, 
people from uh, every country in the world, literally. That is Jedi Fasolino. He and his family moved to Toronto from sunny South America. That's probably why the very first thing they noticed when they got here was the weather. I'm from a tropical country, so my first time seeing the snow was in Canada. So it was a, a beautiful moment. But I'm not gonna lie, there was a tear. <laughs> but the Fossilinos didn't move to Toronto for the snow. They came because they'd heard there are lots of Spanish-speaking people here who don't know about Jesus. And they had heard right. There are lots of those people here, but they're not easy to find. In Toronto, there's actually a, a Korean town, a Chinatown, Greek town, but there's no Hispanic town. Venezuelans, Colombians, uh, Cubans, uh, we are here. Uh, we are all over the place. Uh, you just need to know where to look for us. Where to look, it turned out, was a mushroom farm, like this one, out in the suburbs. This is where hundreds of Hondurans and Guatemalans had come, looking for work. These are people that they have left behind, family, friends, they left behind everything just to come here to work. So they feel alone and there was no Hispanic church at all, not at all. They, and that's how we decided to start a, a Hispanic church uh, because uh, someone uh, needed uh, to look for these people. I love that we get to see all the different cultures in Toronto. Think about all the different cultures that were talked about and that we saw in the city of Toronto. It's like every country in the world in one place. How cool is that? And we're going to pray for the Fasianos as they are doing great work in Toronto. We want to pray for their church. We want to pray that they would continue to grow. How cool is it that God used a mushroom farm to share the gospel? God used a mushroom farm to show people, hey, this is what we need to do here in Toronto. I think that's awesome. So we want to pray for our missionaries in Toronto, and we want to continue praying for all of our missionaries. And I want to encourage you that you guys, I want to remind you that you guys are missionaries. Your mission is right here. When you walk outside, when you go to school, that's your mission field. All right. So if you were here last Sunday in person, you know the verses that I'm going to tell you, which is kind of cool that there are new key passage for the next unit. But in this unit, we're basically talking about how we're called to go and make disciples. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, which is our key passage for this unit, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And it says this, Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I love that passage. I love, and this passage appears after Jesus had been resurrected and he appears to his disciples. And this is him encouraging his disciples to continue going, to continue sharing. Jesus gave his disciples the Great Commission. We are also on Great Commission. We're called to make disciples. So, my encouragement this week is to go, is to make disciples, to pray for someone. Find, find one person on your heart this week and pray for them every day. Pray that God would do a work in their life. Pray that you could speak to them about your relationship with the Lord. But most importantly, just pray for them. We're going we're gonna to see how we can go and how we can make disciples. And I want to encourage you all that you can do it as much as I can. All right? Uh, what a great unit to start today with Peter escaping and learning about our missionaries in Toronto and learning that we are called to go. One simple word is what Jesus says, go. And so 
As we wrap up in prayer this morning, I want to encourage you to do the same thing, to go and make disciples. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you now. I thank you for this great story about Peter and how even when he was chained between two guards and there were guards on the outside of the prison cell, you rescued him. Lord, we may not be physically in chains in a prison cell, but you can rescue us from whatever we're facing. And I pray that we would put our hearts and our trust in you, Lord, and whatever happens, we would pray for your glory to be done. And we know that you're going to answer our prayers, even if you don't answer them the way we want. Lord, help us to glorify you in all that we do as we go and make disciples. Lord, we love you, and we're going to give you all the praise and glory for what you're doing. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you guys have a great week. We will be back next week continuing our unit on spreading the gospel and how we can spread the gospel. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you all next Sunday morning. Have a great week.